but the corporate sector who is not a citizen can donate 10 crores, 100 crores, his name will not be there. What's the rationale for that? I, as a citizen's name, I'll have to be, it will have to be disclosed. So, is the corporate sector is being granted a privilege over a citizen of this country? That privilege of anonymity? How is he more privileged than a citizen who is at the heart of the Constitution of India? How is he being given a preferential treatment? Why? Because you want to enrich yourself through this scheme. And enrich yourself because you're in power. Whereas the opposition may be in power in a state. They will also enrich themselves. I'm not, this is not political. Because all business will actually be attracted towards this scheme because this is one way of getting access. I, I just pardon me, Malas, for saying so from personal experience. If people donate, Malas, we know who is donating. He will give me a call and say, sir, I want to come over. I will hear him. But if I don't know his name who is donated, Malas, I won't listen. I mean, I, how many calls will I answer? So you get access. Straight away you get access. And this, all this anonymity that we are talking about is really not anonymous. Because the person who donates will go and tell him orally that I gave you such and such money. This is the amount I gave you, 100 crores. Only he will know that he gave. The anonymity would exist only if it was truly fungible. That's right. In which case, if it's truly fungible, like a DMAT account, in which That's case, right. you give it to, say, the election. Then it's commission, anonymity. And then it, is, uh, right. then it becomes anonymous. That's right. Now it is not. In fact, it is not anonymous if you ask me. That's my submission. Because I have given 100 crores, I know that I bought a bond. My learned friend, Mr. Shanti Bhushan, uh, Mr. Shant Bhushan said, no, no, uh, he'd give it to a third person, doesn't matter. But who is interested in, in that bond? The person who I, who I bought the bond. So I will go and tell whoever I want to tell that I gave you. So he doesn't have to go to the State Bank of India. Let's talk practical politics. He doesn't have to go to the State Bank of India to find out. Nor does the State Bank of India have to disclose it. The person who gave it will disclose it because he knows why he gave it. So what is anonymous about this? This is protecting the rich. There is another thing. The issue which we are just discussing on which perhaps the learned attorney may give us an answer, but since Mr. Sibyl is on his leg, we will just put it to him, Mr. Attorney and Mr. Sarasra, you can also, in your turn, you can answer. Suppose A purchases the bond. Yes. He purchases bonds worth X amount, 100 crores. Yeah. A, a is only the person who's been put up to purchase the bond because that A has a KYC, etc. Yes, yes, yes. A has to only physically hand over the bond to B. Yes. Right? Who's in, or B gives it to C, who will in turn give it to a political party. Correct. Now, B, there is no control over the transaction between A and B. Yes. So B can trade on that bond for cash or for yes. whatever other consideration. Yes, yes. B acquires that bond. Yes. B hands it over to a political party. Yes. Or B gives it to C and C hands it over to a political party. Yes. The person who has satisfied the requirement of the transaction being through the normal banking channels is A, the purchaser, the ostensible yes. purchaser of the bond. Correct. But this does not obviate the fact that the people who are really Behind it. Behind it. Yes. That they have used authorized banking channels. Yes. All that they have to do is that the, the Get somebody's KYC. Says trading is prohibited. Yes. But there's no way you can prohibit Absolutely. trading the bond. Absolutely. B doesn't have to buy the bond from B no, A through official banking no, no, channels. No, because no. because there's no record of any transactions in the bond. It That's just goes from hand to hand. That's right. Because of the curtain, then you cannot be any questions with regard to quid pro quo. That's right. And then ultimately, the person who is actually invested in it is the person who will tell the political party. Who is the holder ultimately? No, no, no. In this case, probably, the person, they'll know who is the Would purchaser. Would be B or C. Would they know the purchaser, but the actual purchaser is A. B. Exactly. Whereas the, in, the, in the KYC, etc., A is the one who's... That's right. Absolutely right. So, Mara, this is... It, it, is a, it's, it, 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 per, it perpetuates... It also, B may be an aggregator of the bonds. That also. By having 10 different people subscribe to 100 different people subscribe to a bond right. worth 1 crore each. That's right. 
Well, there the human, at least the Indian human mind is ingenious in these matters. <laughs> we control the economy of the world in many ways. And the RPI raised these concerns repeatedly. <laughs> We now look at question C, frequently asked questions FAQ, page 138. Question number 36. 128. 138, question 36. My Lord has that. Who is, is the bona fide owner of the electoral bond? Who is the electoral owner of that? Uh, who is the bona fide owner of that bond? Electoral bonds are bearer banking instruments. It's exactly what my Lord, the Chief Justice said. And the holder of elected bonds is the bona fide owner of the same. Nothing can be more anonymous than this. All that you need is the KYC, that's it. And then see 17 at page 31, what, sorry, page 131, PDF 131, question 17. Can electoral bonds be purchased multiple times by the same applicant? Yes. Yes, every application will be treated as fresh request for electoral bonds purchased, and every time fresh KYC documents will be given. So you'll have bond brokers, you'll have in betweens, you'll have all kinds of people Mullahs, participating in this. So it's not just a question of transparency, Mullahs. It's much wider than that. Last of all, Mullahs, if I do not know these facts, if I don't get to know the name of the donor, I don't get to know the transaction. I don't get to know the possible direct or indirect quid pro quo. I can't participate in democracy. It is also a matter of participation in democracy. I will then be sued for defamation that you made this allegation without the facts. But how will you get to know? How will I get to know the facts if you hide the facts through an electoral scheme like this? I can't raise questions in Parliament. I can't raise questions outside parliament. Does the scheme Mullahs has no definite objective? If it were a definite objective of funding through the corporate sector, the process of election without funding a political party, I can understand. You can have electoral bonds to fund the election process. But what you're doing here is you're funding a party. It's different. The object is different. So you call it electoral bonds, but these are not electoral bonds. And the limit of expenditure has nothing to do with it. Well, it's 123, six of the Constitution, uh, of the Representation of People's Act, talks of expenses. Corruption, an act of corruption beyond 95 lakhs now. So the larger issue that your lordships will have to consider that this is no part of participatory democracy at all. Every scheme must have a leg legitimate object. What's the legitimate object here? Which is constitutional. It is, it, the, the scheme must be such, it must be proportionate to the object sought to be achieved. And it, the underlying principle under the constitution is free and fair election, which is a basic feature of the Constitution. How are you serving these three purposes, Mullahs? You are serving none of these three. No legitimate object because the, it is not limited to the uh, elections. No proportionality because it's unlimited. And no free and fair elections because my learned friend has shown to your lordships how heavily it is loaded towards the party in power. So you are creating a non-level playing field through the electoral bonds. And that's violative of 324. Now, Malaz, historically, as your Lordship knows, Malaz, in 1969, through legislation, we had Malaz, prohibited corporate donations altogether. And in 1985, Malaz, through an amendment, we said, OK, the corporate sector can donate, but only to the extent of 5% of the average earnings in the last three years, three financial years. 5% or 7.5%? I'm sorry? Okay. Initial 5%. 5. 
whereas 85 was 5%. Then through an amendment, it was 2013 Act, it was changed to 7.5. 2013. The Companies Act. Well, actually, I've put it all in the written submissions, but because my blended colleagues are waiting for me to end, so I'm not wanting to take their time, Melis. Your lordships have said that do it, you know, be as short as possible. But whatever I have said to your lordships, Melis, are the propositions that emerge from the scheme itself. Mr. Sibyl, submissions are in which volume? Uh... Volume one. Again, volume one, right? Yes, yes volume right. one. All, all the submissions. All the submissions. Right. One. Yes, we got. Then it's page, page 48. 48. Yes. PDF 48. Yeah. And if you just, I'll take a few minutes, Mother, then I'll be done. Because my learning friends, I want to give them time too. The first, Mother's few pages are just the scheme itself, the electoral bond scheme itself goes up to. Uh, goes up to page PDF, page 63. My lords have that. It's just the elements of the electoral bond scheme which have already been well explained to your lordships. So I will, not, I will not trouble your lordships with that. That's been explained. But you come to 63, then well as I deal with the issue of free and fair elections under the, under, under the Constitution. And I say it's the basic feature of the Constitution. And it's now recognized that para 15 millers, I say, as, as will be developed below any nature of funding that is opaque and that seeks to hide the source of funding is contrary to the spirit of free and fair elections, which is part of the basic structure. That's the transparency argument, plus the free and fair in the context of which, millers, in the context of my submissions before your lordships now. Then election is a vehicle of representative democracy. I've given judgments, millers, page 66, and then para 17. And well, this whole concept of black money, I mean, I don't understand <laughs> the cash that is given below 2,000 can be black money. The 20,000 rupees has to be disclosed. That also can be black money. Because you can say cash in hand, 20,000 rupees. And the electoral bond can also be black money. And over, above, over and above that, there is black money. <laughs> 